Hello, I'm Ted Nyquist with the Midwest Chapter of the American Rhododendron Society. In today's lesson, I'm going to discuss rhododendron nomenclature and plant selection and give you some tips on where to purchase your plants. There are several types of rhododendrons and they differ in terms of their hardiness, which I will explain. Let's start by discussing nomenclature first. Many people are not aware that azaleas are a subgenus of rhododendrons. However, not all rhododendrons are azaleas. They are members of the heath family, which include heaths, heathers, blueberries, and mountain laurel. Mountain laurel, heaths, and heathers are not very frequently seen in the upper Midwest. However, there are many blueberry farms in central Michigan in the nice sandy low pH soil that exists there. There are a number of important differences between rhododendrons and azaleas. Rhododendrons usually have 10 stamens, while azaleas usually have five. These are not exact numbers, and the amount does vary from time to time and shrub to shrub. Azaleas usually are smaller shrubs and has smaller leaves than do the rhododendrons. Also, azaleas generally exhibit smaller flowers than the rhododendrons. This is true for both the deciduous and the evergreen azaleas. There are typically five categories of rhododendrons. The first, or the elepidotes, are the large leaf evergreen rhododendrons, and there are many to choose from that will go well in the upper Midwest. When we say evergreen, that does not mean that they won't lose their leaves, and indeed they do every two to three years. But they grow back, and not all leaves are lost at one time. Next is the lepidotes, or the small leaf evergreen rhododendrons. Uh, one typically found is a PJM, which is quite hardy, and found in many nurseries in uh, our chapter. Next are the deciduous azaleas, which are maybe the overall hardiest of the lot. Um, the deciduous az azaleas uh, do lose their leaves every year, but they grow back and come in very various colors and sizes. Next are the evergreen azaleas, and although they are probably the most tender of the various categories, there are several different ones that are quite hardy in our climate. Last but not least are the species, which are native azaleas and rhododendrons found in their natural habitat, not artificially hybridized, throughout not only the U.S., but the world as well. I wanted to show you examples of the first four major categories of rhododendrons and azaleas. This first one is a picture of a calcep, the large leaf evergreen rhododendron. It's white with a burgundy runway. Leaves are about five and a half inches long and two and a half inches across. It's hardy to minus 25 degrees F, and I have one in our yard that's eight to nine in feet tall and still growing. Seems to do very well in our climate in zone 5B. Next is a small leaf evergreen rhododendron. This one is called PJM rhododendron by the developer Peter J. Mezet. It's an extremely hardy rhododendron found in many nurseries as well as gardens throughout the upper Midwest. Small leaf rhododendrons tend as a general class to be extremely hardy and tolerate more sun than the average large leaf rhododendron. I have seen in the literature that this one is hardy in the range of minus 30 to minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit.
This is an example of a deciduous azalea. It is a mandarin light, which is a part of the Northern Light series originally developed at the University of Minnesota. We are in zone 5B, and this Northern Light series grows extremely well in our climate. They're disease resistant and come in a variety of different colors. We have one in our garden that's approximately seven feet tall, and I've seen even taller ones in various other gardens in the upper Midwest. This is an example of a Karen's azalea. It is an evergreen azalea. It is a prolific bloomer and does well in our garden in the upper Midwest. We have one in our garden that's two to three feet high and five feet across, and it's still growing. It's very easy to control, and you can prune it way back if you want to in the spring after it has bloomed. There are numerous places where you can purchase your plants. I must put a plug in for the Midwest Chapter Plant Sale, which is held each year at the Chicago Botanic Garden over Mother's Day weekend. We select a number of plants which will perform well in your garden and are generally larger than you can purchase in a nursery or by mail order. So if you're located near enough to Chicagoland, I suggest you try to make the sale. Other sources are local nurseries. I would call ahead to check their availability. The bid box stores are also a number of rhododendrons and azaleas. Make sure you type the type you're buying and where they are grown. Sometimes the big box stores don't list the type and just make a list of the plants as rhododendrons. Be wary of these. Plants are also available by, ma by mail order from several nurseries and growers. Rare Fine Nursery in New Jersey and the Whitney Gardens and Nursery in the state of Washington are just two. There are several others. I will leave you now and let you take a look of some of the Midwest gardens in bloom.